Hi guys, hope everyone is well and having a good time. Uh, quickly, just want to say thank you so much for all the love and support that you've shown the channel. It uh, it really does mean a lot to me, and uh, seeing that subscriber count go up, um, it's a really nice feeling. So just thank you very much, I really do appreciate it. Um, but today we're going to talk about my camera collection, and basically with this is this is all my cameras currently. However, some have sold. And the whole point of this video is, this is what my camera collection is, currently was, and my goal is to make sure I can fit it into this box. <laughs> now that might seem a bit strange to some people, but once you see my camera collection, uh, I think you'll kind of know where, where I'm going. So let's start with the point and shoots first, and we'll get to the bigger stuff later on. So first one. This is the Minolta 35, a big finder F35. This is an absolutely fantastic little point and shoot camera. 35 millimeter, you know, it's it's in mint condition. I absolutely love it. It works, it's so good. The viewfinder is absolutely fantastic. It just it just works. It's just such a good camera. And you know, as you can see there. It's absolutely pristine, clean. It's oh, it's just it's just an absolutely fantastic camera. I absolutely love it. And uh, this has actually found a new owner. So this is the first camera that I'm introducing, and the first one that's actually gone from the collection. Um, but anyway, so there we are. That's the first point and shoot. The second point and shoot. This is got a little bit of a sentiment attached because it used to be uh, my mother's. And this is what she used to uh, record all of our family uh, outings and etc. on. It is a Canon uh, Sure, that's it, Sure Shot F AF7 uh, automatic uh, point and shoot 35 millimeter camera. Again, it's a lot like the Minolta, you know, a big, bright viewfinder where you can see everything. Absolutely brilliant. Boom, flash works, everything works on it. Um, you can also with this, it's a bit more advanced where you can tell it to turn the flash on or off. You just simply hold that, go up, it thinks about it, still thinking about it, and then takes the shot. You know, it's not the fastest, but it will it will certainly get the job done. So that is the one, and that has also gone to a new home. So hopefully it will uh, get a lot of enjoyment from everyone there. Um, let's stick with 35 mil. So here we are, Pentax. This is the, I think it's, is this the AE? Yeah, no, A3, sorry. This is the A3. Um, quite an advanced digital, uh, digital, quite an advanced um, sort of uh, film camera. Uh, basically, you can sell it to manual or it's basically pro, sorry, it's completely programmed, this camera. Um, the A stands for advanced. Um, so, and it will, you know, can read film up to 1600 ASA. And it's just a, a general, really nice um, Pentax 35mm in really nice condition. And um, I've shot a few rolls on it many, many years ago, I have to admit now. And um, yeah, it's a really nice camera. It's, it's, it's a little good find. I think you can pick them up fairly cheap on eBay. You know, you're talking, I don't know, 20 to... Twenty pounds to thirty-ish dollars, perhaps. Uh, probably a bit less now, to be honest with you, because it's not a like a hype sort of camera, as it were. Um, but there we are. There is another thirty-five mil film camera, and then we have the Pentax Emmy Super. This is an absolutely fantastic film camera. And I would highly recommend, and if you're looking to get into film photography, if I can take this cap off. Anyway, I'll sort that out in a minute. Um, if you're looking to get into film photography, this is an absolutely fantastic um, camera to own. Uh, this currently has the 50, this is the F4? So the, uh, F, yeah, F2, sorry, F2. And, uh, you know, it is absolutely phenomenal. Super camera, really good, completely manual in the sense that you do need to put uh, some batteries in it. 
Um, but they are their normal kind of easy to find batteries. I think they're the CR, I don't know if they want to, but you know, the normal batteries that everyone can get. Um, advance, lever, film rewinder, brilliant. And then if you want to adjust any of your shutter settings, it is these two buttons. So lower or down, it has a lock, it has an automatic mode, manual mode. If the batteries do die, you can turn it to 1 25th of a second, and that will take, it will still take photos no matter what without batteries, but only at 125th of a second. So it's kind of a neat camera, super compact, and you know, it's just an all round good camera to really start your photography. Um, this is also being sold. So hope the uh, lucky owner of that really enjoys it. Um, right. This is very special. This is staying in my collection. This was my great grandfather's. And I don't know if it works, but it is in incredibly good condition, as you can see there. Really nice condition. This is a Kodak Retin Retinit, Retinit, uh, 35mm film camera. Um, really nice, quite, you know, very basic. Everything's on the lens. Uh, it will only go up to 250th of a second shutter speed, and you have an aperture of 3.5 down to 22. Everything's on the lens here, and then the focusing is done like this on the lens, and you have a nice, uh, bright frame line. This does not show if you're in, uh, if you're in focus or not, or no patch or anything like that. So it's basically, okay, right, I am, um, say, I don't know what we are. Is this meat? Actually, is this in meters or is this in feet? Okay, so this is just in feet. So there we are. There we learned something there. Uh, 50 mil, 3.5 on this. So if I'm, like, say, I don't know, I'm eight, seven feet away, uh, boom, click it, should be in focus. So it's basically your zone focus in this camera all the time. Um, but no, it's quite a nice little bit of history. So I have kept this. This is dear to my heart. And uh, it has its name inscribed on the top here. Uh, obviously, if it ever got lost back in the day, and uh, it's just a very nice, uh, nice little camera to have on the shelf and to talk to people about, you know, nice backstory basically. Now, as you can tell, I've got a lot of 35 gear, and this is the whole point of why I wanted it to fit into that little box. The next one is the Nikon F5. This is an absolutely fantastic camera. I know the review will come. It might have come already before this video. It might not have. Um, but it is absolutely a phenomenal camera. It, you know, I, I have a very strong feeling that if you want a fully automatic, advanced camera uh, in 35mm, you really need to check out the Nikon F5. We'll take. Nikon F lenses. Where are we going up? You know, Nikon F mount will take Nikon F lenses, no problem at all. Pretty much all of them. And it's completely automatic. So it will go on there. You can, you can tell it to read ISO if you want to uh, for manual, but it automatically reads the uh, DX mark on your film. So no problem there. Flash, you know, control, <sighs> bracketing, just absolutely everything you have. Um, single operation mode all the way up to uh, to high speed mode. That is insane, isn't it? I think it's about eight frames a second on a film camera. Not that you want to shoot eight frames a second like today, but uh, with all that cost going up. But uh, this is brilliant. This is like, I would say, I know they did the F6, but to me, the F5 is the last proper professional film camera from Nikon uh, or Nikon, where, how you pronounce it. You know, you have advanced film winding, um, autofocus, which is absolutely rapid. I've used this from, you know, really old uh, D lenses to um, and actually AIS lenses as well on this. And also, um, you know, the new like, you turn it F2 is 600 mils. This thing is an absolute tank. It's fantastic. It is done on eight AA batteries. Brilliant. You can get AA batteries anywhere in the world. And those batteries, what are these? 
They are Panasonic alkalines, and basically they have been in the camera for probably a year. No word of a lie, a year. And if you can see there, if I can light it up, it says that it has a full battery still. Phenomenal camera. I'm never, ever going to sell this. This is an absolutely brilliant camera. And I'm keeping this because this is the most advanced uh, 35mm camera I have. And my whole essence for fitting all that camera gear in that box that you saw at the start of this video is that I want a really nice film, 35mm film camera that can do everything. That's the Nikon F5. And then I also want a really good digital camera and then a really nice medium format camera. But anyway, talking about digital, this is what I'm keeping because this is a really, like, quite nostalgic bit of history. I've never used this camera, but a lot of people have and a lot of people like it. This is the Nikon D1. This is the very first Nikon digital camera. And as you can see, it's quite dusty and beat up. But it's basically like everything that we've seen before. CF card reader, digital, um, connection cable, all the cameras. As you can see from this to the F5, they're not a lot, they didn't change a lot. But, you know, remember digital was quite a new thing and a lot of people didn't take it up, you know, very quickly. So a familiarity with this at the F5, you know, is, is quite nice. Um, you have your monitor. You know, again, you have your PC playback, uh, you know, various things. It's quite basic in that sense, but it's absolutely fantastic. And this sits on my shelf as a little reminder that, look, this is where it first came from. Um, this actually has a battery, a weird way where you charge the battery through this little cable here, not uh, like in a proper charger. But, you know, it is what it is. This is a brilliant camera. And I'm actually uh, going to look for a charge for this and bring this to the channel and see if this two megapixel camera is still kind of cool to use today. So that's another video for another time. OK, right. So now we're going into the digital camera that I'm keeping. I'm sure you all know what it is if you've been watching the channel. Uh, again, if not, guys, 97% of you that do watch these videos uh, are not subscribed. So if you could go down and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to make sure you know when I'm uh, recording and uh, doing videos, that would be absolutely fantastic. So this is the Leica ME. Now, basically, the ME is based on the Leica M9 system. So basically, it's the Leica M9. It's a CCD full frame 18 megapixel sensor. And this camera is absolutely fantastic. This is a rangefinder camera, um, completely digital, absolutely love it. The screen is horrendous. So if you are, I wonder if, you, do I have any photos on this? Let me, I do. So yeah, so basically here's the screen. I don't think it looks too bad in black and white, but this screen is not high resolution that we're used to today. So really, it's uh, you take a photo, just kind of review if everything's OK. Sometimes I don't even look at the back. I just you treat sort of treat it like a, a hybrid in a film stroke digital camera uh, where I go take the photo and just leave it. And then if I do want to do it, I'll press the play um, again with Leica's. It's a very simple system. Play, delete, ISO, info, set. That's it. That is literally it. You have your shutter dial up top and you have your focus and aperture on your lens. Uh, this is the 50mm 1.4 TTR SAM. Brilliant. Check the annotate up there. I did a review on this. It is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, this is a brilliant camera. I love it. Uh, this has actually replaced uh, my Nikon uh, D800 for my uh, main shooting body. And again, I did it because of just how compact this lens is. Uh, sorry, this camera is. And I just love the rangefinder in it. I absolutely love it. And um, it just suits my, my style of work. So this is staying in the box. <laughs> now, a new addition, which I don't know if you've, you probably have seen it actually already. I think 
that video will go up before this one, is my medium format camera. Yeah, it's a big boy. This is the Fujika GW690. So this is a medium format rangefinder with a fixed lens of 90 millimeter, and it's a 90 mil 3.5. So that equates to roughly about a 40-ish mil lens, 35 equivalent. And this is an amazing camera. I absolutely love it. It is a rangefinder style. Uh, they call this, some people, the Texas Leica, just because of how big proportions it is. And if you kind of get both of them side by side, you can kind of see where they get it gets that name from, can't you? Um, 120 film. You'll only get eight shots on this. This this shoots six centimeter, by, sorry, nine centimeter by six centimeter um, negatives. They are absolutely massive, absolutely full of detail, and you know you literally only get eight. So you have to kind of use this sparingly. If you go for expired two twenty film. Or I think there's a new there's a new uh, 220 film out as well, black and white, Shanghai, I think it's called. Uh, you'll get 16 exposures, which you know if you do that, that kind of works out quite well. I'm kind of, kind of happy with that. Um, it also can take four exposures. That is for when they used to do half rolls of 120, which I believe no longer exist. Um, fully mechanical body, no batteries, no nothing. It's a range finder. And I, that's just what I wanted in a medium format camera. I wanted a non-battery dependent camera. I had a Pentax 645, the original. That was related on, uh, relied on batteries heavily. Um, every time they died, if I was a mid-roll of film, mid of film, it would literally just rewind the film. And I just hated it. I just didn't like it. Really didn't like it at all. Um, it, was a, it produced good images uh, when it worked for me. And it just didn't work for me. This works for me really well i absolutely love it it will go all the controls are done on the lens and it will go up to 500 of a second all the way down to bulb mode uh or one second so one second all the way up to 500 and lens aperture 35 all the way down to sorry 3.5 all the way down to 32 uh the lens is so sharp it's absolutely fantastic you have your shutter up here, and then you also have another handy shutter uh, here as well for vertical shooting portrait. Absolutely brilliant. And again, when you're moving this, the range, uh, sorry, the frame lines actually move within the rangefinder, so you can completely see exactly what you're going to be shooting. It's an absolutely fantastic camera, and I absolutely love it. So that is. For the time being, all my film cameras, and I just can't shoot them all. So, medium format camera that I love, the Fujika 6W, sorry, the GW690. That is in the box. My Leica ME digital camera, CCD 16 megapixel. This is in the box. My Nikon F5, the, it's just such a good, good film camera. Absolutely fantastic. This is staying in the box. And then the humble D1. This is going on the shelf. This is a nice conversation piece. This is staying on the shelf. And then my great grandfather's Kodak. This means more than any monetary value or anything like that you know i think you can pick them up if you're interested for about you know 10 pounds you know 15 dollars something like that um but i absolutely love it and this is staying on the shelf so now instead of having one two three four five six seven eight nine cameras nine in total i now have one two three four five cameras so not too bad <laughs> But the one, the uh, main cameras that I am using and actually uh, work is the Nikon F5, the medium format, and the Leica. So technically, I only have three cameras that I use all the time.
Anyway, guys, uh, that is the end of this video. Uh, drop a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, thumbs down if not. Subscribe if you can. That would be fantastic. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers, guys.